We're in Microsoft Azure and I've got my virtual machines up and I want to add more storage. So I'm going to click on my Azure test virtual machine and I'm going to click on disks. Now my initial disk is defaulted to 127 gigabytes, but you can certainly make that larger or smaller when you create the virtual machine. But I just left it at the default. And if I click on that particular disk, it gives me some additional information. It shows me throughput. It shows me disk operations per second or IOPS, as well as disk queue. I'm going to go back to my last screen and I'm going to choose to add a data disk. Let's say I don't have enough storage yet. So I'm going to hit the drop down under the name and click on create disk. Now I've got to give it a name. So I'm going to call this one extra storage. I'm going to leave this as the resource group Azure training because that is the same one as my virtual machine. If I put it into a different one, then I won't be able to connect it to my virtual machine. Under the source type, we can choose either storage blob or snapshot. I want to make this a storage blob. And here's where I have the option to create a blob. Now, a blob can be used for a lot of different things, such as backups and storing files, basic files, that kind of thing. Not as good for using, say, SQL databases because it doesn't have that type of file structure, but it is good for basic storage. And we see the OS type can be Windows or Linux, etc. I can also choose none for the source type and just make it a real basic disk and that's fine too. The advantage to choosing the blob storage is that I can connect it to multiple different locations. I can connect it to virtual machines, I can connect it to my Windows 10 computer back at my on-premises location or server, whatever it is that I want. But basic storage is just going to be connected to my uh, virtual machine at Azure, which is perfectly fine. Encryption type, if encryption is important, then you can choose either the default or the encryption at rest with a customer managed key, which adds additional security. And as far as the size goes, we see the default size is going to be 1024 gigabytes, which is a lot. So I'm going to click on change and I'm just going to choose four gigabytes instead. So I'm going to go from a terabyte to just four gigabytes and click create. We can see in the upper right hand corner the disk is being created. And when it's all done, it'll pop up letting us know. And now I'll click save. And now it's saving that storage. And what it's doing is it's connecting that storage to the virtual machine. If you wanted to create storage that's not connected to the virtual machine, you just wouldn't attach it here. You'd create the storage and that was it. If you created storage earlier that you'd like to add in, you can click in Add Data Disk, and if you see any other disk in this list, then you can choose it and attach it. I'm just going to discard that and just leave my extra storage. And now I'm going to go back to Overview, start up my virtual machine, and make sure that I can see my new storage. Now I'm going to copy my IP address and open up Remote Desktop. paste it in and connect to my server. My virtual machine is up and running. I'm going to type in computer management. You could also get this if you're on a server by going to server manager. Click on storage and then disk management. As soon as I open this up, look at that. We see that a disk has shown up. How would I like to format it? Either MBR or GPT. Well, if it's less than two terabytes, I can go with MBR or GPT. Anything larger than that, I'll have to go with GPT. So I'll click OK. There's no real advantage to choosing one over the other at this point for a disk this small. And we see the four gigabyte disk is now online. Now I can choose a new simple volume by right clicking and choosing that option. I'll choose to create the entire volume. And it's wanting to use drive letter E, but I can choose any letter I want that's available. And I'll click Next. And it's going to perform a quick format, which is helpful. We don't have to wait too long for it. Now when it's all done, I can click on File Explorer, click on this PC, and there's my E drive. Four gigabyte drive, double click on it, and we see it's ready to add files to it. So that's how we add storage to a Microsoft Azure virtual machine.